G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Q&A plus advice time for this one, going out to a viewer T4T. In other words, T, the number four, another T, and then multiple E's after that. I'm just gonna say T4T, <laughs> just, just to keep it simple. All right, now, he's posted a few comments on a couple of videos of mine lately uh, regarding a Dell PowerEdge 1950. And it's giving him a few hassles at the moment. So let's help him out. First off, the Dell Power Edge 1950. Good, good utility server. In fact, I have to be honest with you, it's probably one of their better utility servers. And what I mean by utility server is it can be used for anything. PDC, Linux server, Unix server, Samba server, print server, uh, gateway, routing, NAS, SAN, you name it. Excellent, excellent utility server. Um, I actually haven't used a Dell PowerEdge 1950 in some time. But nevertheless, SATA enabled, fantastic. They're SAS. Um, and I still get arguments now saying that SAS is not SCSI. Well, actually, SAS is serial attached to SCSI, but we won't get into that argument again. All right, so we've got a couple of problems here we've got to sort out for him and give him some advice on. So let's start off with one problem he's got. It sounds like a jet engine the first time you fire it up. Yes, that's right. Can't stop it. It's part of the post. Um, now, for those that are unfamiliar with the innards of a Dell PowerEdge 1950, it's a 1U rack server. Now, often you find in a 1U rack server that the fans are very small. And in the case of the 1950, there are, there are eight rows of fans, and each row has two fans put together, two tunnel-like fans put together. The four blade, the pitch is at about 45 degrees. Now, the reason for the, such the big pitch on the blade is because there's very few fans in it. You're stuck with just that row of fans, and that row of fans has to cool the whole server. There's no way of putting fans at the back of the server. Okay? So, being a Dell, being modular, you take the top off it, right in front of you at the front of the server is your hard drive and DVD I.O. system with the mid-plane there. Behind the mid-plane are your eight rows of fans. So you've got two, four, six, eight. Is it eight? Yeah. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight across the width of the server. So I'm having to do this for memory. Behind those are obviously the PSU on one side, and then you've got your prox and the rest of the board, okay? With obviously the, um, I think there's a baffle there for the RAM as well if you're running uh, ECC RAM with heat spreaders on it. Um, now, he wants to know why the fans are like they are. Most Dell servers, the fans during post will run up to full throttle for the um, for post. And in some cases, they'll come back down to a cruise speed. Now, you, there's not much you're going to be able to do about that. If you want to change it, I think you can change it in the BIOS, but I'm open to being corrected on that because I can't remember the BIOS of the 1950. Number two, you could check it through the DRAC if you've received a DRAC. Now, a DRAC, for those that aren't aware, Dell Remote Access Controller or CARD. They can be a nightmare, believe me. I've experienced them in the past and they are a nightmare in some cases. Okay, so that's your first problem. Now we come to the more catastrophic issue. I'm going to quote his comment here, and I'm, I'm expecting some people to roll their eyes because that's what I did. And I don't want to be rude or nasty, but I think whatever's happened has caused a catastrophic problem. I plugged, to quote the comment, <coughs> excuse me, I plugged it up, I plugged it in using a dodgy kettle lead, and it blew a fuse and now shows orange status. Okay, let me pass on a bit of advice to everybody. First off, with any IT equipment, you should not use any form of dodgy lead. I'm sorry, no. Number two, don't use a kettle lead. Look, I know the temptation's there sometimes. You can't find an IEC computer lead. You know your kettle's got one, so you just go and grab the one off the kettle. No, 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 no. You don't do that. I'm sorry. Now, 
the blowing of the fuse. There's two possibilities why that happened. First possibility was the power supply was stuffed and that caused problems. Number two, which I think may be the whole problem anyway, T4T, your dodgy kettle leads bugger the power supply, mate. So I can't sugarcoat that one, fella. Once the power supply shows orange, you got a problem. You can open up the power supply on those and check the internal fuse and make sure that hasn't blown. Now, if it has, you can probably replace it and salvage the power supply. But there's a high likelihood, I'm sorry to say, that if the power supply was good and you've used a dodgy kettle lead, you're up for a new power supply. Viewers, please, don't... Look, like I said, I know sometimes you get a bit of computer equipment you don't know where you've put your IEC lead, so you, and most kettles use an IEC lead, so you go and grab the kettle lead. Don't. Please take my advice. I know some people look at me like I'm an absolute Aussie idiot who knows nothing because I'm an insignificant Victorian. But just listen to me for once. When you get a server or a PC, use a proper lead. All right, I'm, I'm trying to be nice about this, but T4T, I think you've done your own, dug your own hole on that one, mate. I'm sorry to say that. Um, now, how do we get around this problem? Well, one, assuming you haven't actually damaged the power supply by using the dodgy kettle lead, take the power supply out, pull out, pull, pull off the top of the power supply, check the fuses. That's your first thing. If you have buggered it, which is what it's sounding like, I'm sorry to say, you're going to have to get another PSU for it. But in saying that, at the same time, you're going to have to get a multimeter and check the power input side on the motherboard, where the PSU connects to uh, the power distribution panel. I say again, viewers, please, I know some of you look like look at me like I'm a complete half-wit and dumb Aussie and a dumb Victorian, but just please, if you take only one bit of advice from my channel, don't use a kettle lead to bring your computer or your server up. I'm not wanting to be nasty, but it's a silly, silly thing to do, and especially if it's dodgy. Now, T4T. With your fans, there's not much you're going to be able to do about it. In theory, they should come down to a coasting speed after the post is done. Um, if they don't, you'll need to get into the BIOS and have a sticky beak. Now, I haven't been in the, into the BIOS of a 1950 for some time, so I can't remember it. And Look, I don't know about all you other techs out there, but if you know every BIOS under the sun all around the world and you know where everything is in every BIOS ever made, you're a fair income dead set genius because I don't. I still, I can, I can, I can have an Acer rock up here today that I've used six years ago, and I'm still going to have to go finding where what I'm looking for is in the box because I can't remember where it is. T4T, if you've got a DRAC, you might be able to modify the post settings, but I wouldn't do that. Actually, I wouldn't change if the fans go up to full speed, it's just part of the test. The problem's going to remain is if they stay at full speed, then you've got to worry about it. Um, because I don't have a Dell Power Age 1950 I, physically here, I can't help you. It's amazing how many people think I've got every server under the sun here. Um, but look, what you can do, once you get your power supply system fixed up, um, Put an OS onto the system and see what it does. If the fans come down, then I assume it's much like most Dells. It fires up, tests the fan, and then brings the fans back down, is what I would assume, in theory, it should do, if, it's, if they're working properly. You only need, I think it's one or two fans to have failed in that, and all fans will go to full throttle. Okay? All fans will go to full throttle. But if all eight rows are running, those fans should come down to a coast. Often also with the Dells too, if they haven't been powered on for some time, um, everything will just run up to full throttle and then wind down. Anyway, 
There we go. But like I said, please, viewers, I know I'm an idiot sometimes. I know some of you look at me like I'm a dickhead. Don't use kettle leads, especially dodgy kettle leads, to bring up any computer, PC, or server. Don't do it. Anyway, T4T, if you need any help, mate, don't forget to comment or privately message me or contact me via email. Stick around, we've got the IT acquisitions video coming up shortly as well, and anything else I would find out to do today. Until then, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.